So if you've been paying attention to some of the footage coming out of Ukraine, you've probably seen the photo of the Russian VDV paratroopers that some Ukrainians allegedly trapped in an elevator. It looks like a scene straight out of Battlefield. But one thing that stood out to me is the Gopnik drip. A Gopnik, for those who don't know, is your average sunflower seed spitting, plastic beer bottle drinking, tracksuit enthusiast that you'd find in a former Soviet Republic. But seriously, it looks like these soldiers are wearing knockoff Adidas tracksuits. So maybe Call of Duty isn't that far off with their anime skins. I mean, the army adopted UCP. So let's not pretend like we're not just one weave away from this becoming the next multicam. It's not just the VDV though. You can find it painted on Russian tanks from the Eastern Invasion. When Russian forces took over Hostomel Airport to the north of Kyiv, they were wearing the same bands. You can clearly hear the CNN reporter saying that they're wearing orange and black bands. These are Russian forces, you can tell they're Russian. I've spoken to them already. You can tell they're Russian, they've got that orange and black band to identify them as Russian forces. Even the Chechens coming into Kyiv are decked out with these orange and black three bar ribbons and patches. Now I know some of this audience might be on the younger side, so I wanted to take a moment to give you a sobering reminder. This is that same Chechen column two days later. A lot of people want to romanticize the Ukrainians and the foreign fighters going over there to help fend off the Russian invaders. There's been some reports of guys who do that, and when they get there, they're highly... They've, they've really misunderstood what they were getting themselves into. Yeah. They went there for the romantic idea. Maybe they're LARPers, maybe they're just, you know former whatever and just want to go help but when they're there they're seeing what it is and hey this is not what i thought i was signing up for it's war but this is the reality of a near peer conflict and it's not just for one side you're not going to be the next george orwell writing your homage to kivlonia and you're not going to be teddy roosevelt gut shotting a spaniard on san juan hill and calling it the greatest day of your life so keep that in mind next time you're overcome with romanticized delusions of overthrowing the yoke of russian imperialism just remember you'll probably end up like this so why the ribbons well the obvious answer is to distinguish between russians and ukrainians it seems apparent to both sides that with the same weapons and similar looking uniforms the opportunities for fratricide are high hence the yellow armbands used by Ukrainians. And this is nothing new in terms of Russian doctrine. Reversible orange and yellow fluorescent armbands have been used by Russian direct action teams, FSB, Sobar, etc. for years. Beyond simple identification though, the ribbon has a much richer history. Dating back to 1769, the ribbon first emerged as part of the Order of St. George, the highest military honor in Tsarist Russia. Although an individual award, in 1806, Georgian banners were introduced to mark distinction among Russian Imperial Guard regiments, also known as the Live Guard. The orange and black colors are said to symbolize the fire and gunpowder of war, the death and resurrection of St. George, as well as the colors of the original Russian Imperial coat of arms. However, there is an alternative theory that the colors are German in origin. Having been drawn from the heraldry of the House of Ascania, the family which Catherine the Great came from, after the Bolshevik Revolution, the ribbon disappeared until the Second World War, when it was integrated into the newly established guard units whose badges and banners sported the black and orange colors in a similar fashion to the old Imperial Guard. Later in the war, the ribbon was used as part of the Order of Glory, an award for bravery in the face of the enemy, which was only awarded to enlisted soldiers and junior officers. Most of these medals came out of World War II, but a few were also awarded for Soviet operations in support of the Korean War, the intervention in Hungary in 1956, and during border clashes with China in 1969. More notably though, the black and orange ribbon was part of the Medal for Victory over Germany, which was issued to almost all veterans who participated in the Eastern Front campaigns. From then on, the ribbon could occasionally be seen on postcards commemorating the war, but it wasn't a large part of the Soviet patriotic zeitgeist. It wasn't until 2005 that the ribbon saw widespread prominence as part of the 60th anniversary of VE Day. The news agency RIA Novosti and the youth civic organization Rospom started handing them out as part of the commemoration. Along with the ribbon, they used the slogan, We remember, we are proud. Which means, somewhere out there, there's probably a Russian Toby Keith singing a version of Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. Cause we'll put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. See, they're not that different from you and me. But back to the ribbons. They served a similar function to the yellow ribbons in the United States after the invasion of Iraq. 
Some journalists have speculated that the small George ribbon was a response to the rise in prominence of the orange ribbons in Ukraine during the 2004 Orange Revolution. Man, I knew it would all come back around to Ukraine. Because of its historical association with the Russian military, the orange and black ribbon became a symbol of Russian irredentism, the belief that Russia holds legitimate claims on lands lost after the fall of the Tsar and the USSR. As a result, it was adopted by Russian self-defense forces after the annexation of Crimea, as well as pro-Russian separatist forces in the Donbass. So this is why you've seen the orange and black ribbon adopted by Russian soldiers. Not because they're trying to channel their inner Sasha Ivanik from behind enemy lines, but because of its historic ties to Russian militarism and its use as a symbol of irredentist claims of the former Russian Empire. If you've made it this far, I'd like to talk to you for just a minute. I don't have a huge platform, but I was hoping that maybe I could use it for something good. I was thinking about doing a t-shirt sale to raise money for Ukrainians. Since my tax dollars are doing such a great job of sending lethal aid to Ukraine, I thought the Ukrainian Red Cross would be a great charity to raise money for. But if you have other suggestions, I'd be open to them. As far as the t-shirts go, have a look at my Pinterest vision board. I was thinking, spring break 2022 Iraq invasion vibes meets surf skate. Maybe something like Mario Pool Skate Shop or Odessa Surf Club. I don't really want to brand the channel on it, just make something cool folks might want to wear. They probably sell around 30 USD plus shipping. But let me know if that's too much and I'll see if I could bring it down. I probably need to sell around 30 to make it worthwhile, but ideally more like 50. And let me know if this is a bad idea. I get not wanting to participate in the identity culture of consumerism. So if the support isn't there for it, I'll scrap the idea and figure out another way to try and help. Second business item. I wanted to know if you guys would be interested in a video or a series of videos on covert war theory. I'm currently finishing up my master's in national security studies, and I've seen all sorts of people from the news media to politicians to laymen spouting all different kinds of rhetoric about what various Western countries should be doing in Ukraine. So I was thinking, if I could give some theoretical framework around covert warfare and some case studies so that you can talk about these sorts of things and fully understand the implications of what people are calling for, it could be helpful. And finally, this channel isn't monetized. You didn't hear me sling boner pills or telling you to play some mobile game. And not that I'm above it. If Dave's Ragers wants to pay me to tell you his Mexican supplements will have you bursting the seams on your boxer briefs, I will. But until then, if you got any sort of value out of this, I'd really appreciate it if you do the usual YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, turn notifications on, all that jazz. Thanks for helping the channel grow. Have a good one.